you can make everyone a genius this book challenges the belief of innate or inborn talent it is telling everybody have a hidden potential to become a genius or to become the best with there is a condition supply if there is a proper conditions and motivations conditions for learning and motivation is available you can unleash everybody's potential so the book explain two things one about ambition which is something like what the outcome you want to achieve but the book gives more attention to aspiration the person you want to become there is two different things on that because the second one aspiration focus on improvement and growth the other one is not like that so there is no failure in this part even you go to failure in the normal worldly context you are still winning because you are growing so the founding father of psychology william james at the age of 30 has made a big claim telling that character or character skill is something like plastic especially for the adults for the child it is fine for the adults it's more like plaster not plastic plaster so you cannot change but unfortunately or fortunately for us william james is wrong it is not a plaster latest research or especially the book speaks about william james claim is not correct character skill is like plastic you can mold it or it is something like a clay which you can mold it around it and make something better out of it so the initial chapters of the book talks about a chess game because usually chess people try to find someone if you want to make a team of chess players the coaches try to find the people who has interest in chess and try to hone that skills but more is actually done opposite he tried to find people who has interest who have not at all a skill and he make them the best chess players how he make it instead of teaching them because when usually when you are teaching you teach them the basics and then go to the first but what more is actually teach them is that he teach them how to make the checkmate first how you can just cross the bishop or just win the game he just give that lesson first and children was able to or the the team members were able to just explore themselves improvise and explore themselves it's so a different way of learning so let's go to the first chapter so chapter 1 creatures of discomfort we are actually a creatures of discomfort because the traditional education system the book explain more about education because to unleash your potential wherever you are even if you are a knowledge worker or anything you should have some level of learning improvement it is even if you like it or not like it that is part and parcel of the life but the point is that to to unleash your potential you have to embrace the discomfort and that way you can learn the new skill our traditional education system is somehow more predictable like you have a written textbook you know which questions will come in the exam then they will approach that that is why most of the successful people who is successful or the kids or teens who are successful in school just fail when they go outside because in the outside world or in the real world it is not predictable you have to face the situations unpredictable that's the reason also whoever is not good in school who don't have a good grades they succeed outside because of the same reason as well so we have to embrace the discomfort also set a mistake budget we are afraid of mistakes even if you the research has shown that if you given a people a set of questions to answer and even they fail it doesn't matter still people are afraid to approach such tests we are vulnerable to fail uh, but the adam grant proposed the thing that we have to somehow have a mistake budget or or if i put it in a bill gates way try to make the mistakes fast 
or in another way if you put it just give some allowance for mistakes that actually thrive the risk taking in the corporate world and in the personal world as well be afraid to fail and keep some mistake budget for you human sponges sponge which you rightly think maybe the something which come in your mind maybe is the sponge in your kitchen but here we are trying to talk about a 2000 year old sponge sea sponges which actually survived even where the dinosaurs or any other things in the last 1000 years or more than that which did not survive human sponge the sea sponges has actually survived initially researchers have thought it as an uh, plants but actually they are something like animals and they usually inhale and exhale oxygens and all and they try to absorb the skills that's about sp- that's one reason he tried to mention that metaphor by by sponging by absorbing and contributing it back to the ocean sponges actually survived same way human beings we can be more proactive than reactive more than ego driven we can be just realizable and understand the things that way we can approach and we can approach the life like the human sponges also there is another part like usually when you are growing everybody seeks for feedback even myself when i am making this video sometime i used to ask feedback from also normally subscribers or other people or any other people who come to but adam grant just changed the belief telling that instead of seeking feedback we should seek advice that will give an opportunity for the other person to just contribute more how you can improve rather than feedback which they will be more vulnerable to explore for it japanese have a famous tradition called wabi sabi which put simply put it is like embracing imperfection so if you want to unleash your hidden potential first you have to embrace the imperfection or tolerate the perfectionism inside you we as a perfectionist usually obsessed about irrelevant things and we try to get away from things which is unfamiliar both is actually not good so you have to somehow adjust adjust uh, to- tolerate some level of imperfection at the same time you should be able to have like a curiosity to explore the unfamiliar thing you should strive for excellence rather than perfectionism that i never did a day's work it was all fun the person who just invented 1400 inventions and all telling this one so you should somehow infuse a passion into the practice otherwise you cannot do that in that case when you put that play that passion into that which you can call it in any other way play or flow or anything then you will enjoy that journey so the book explained about scaffolding scaffolding is something which used by construction people to just reach to the heights which is not approachable by ladder so in that way that metaphor is very good because usually we try to tell that climbing the success ladder but here it's more like you are climbing the scaffolding because you are reaching to a heights which normally not reachable for many people so here in scaffolding multiple people can just climb up one thing and you can reach to the longer height that's part of it but another point is that it is like every great thing is actually short steps so scaffolding is somehow telling it's like a temporary structure which you are building for yourself like a learning structure where that can infuse the daily practice in you and you can reach later on you can dismantle and then modify that scaffolding for another purposes you can think it in that way also i'm just thinking something outside the box for you so we have to design practice in such a way that we should challenge ourselves like usually even if it is in gym and all arnold schwarzenegger in our book be useful and he used to tell that i just try to count when 
my muscles are aching like that who so is challenging yourself like people used to in bodybuilders fitness and all is same but same way you can do it in any other parts of your endeavors like for example if you are reading or you are writing or whatever challenge yourself every day in your daily practice but more important is that for sure you should be proactive and all these things but you should give some level of time for rest and recovery because that is equally important you cannot challenge yourself infinitely and you cannot make it fast it should have its time you should always try to give that challenging mindset that will give try to explore a different possibilities of learning also such harmonious passion will create sustained motivation and drive to proceed further that's one part but suppose you are so much proactive and all these things you are going for it so you'll try to get some level of saturation or in other way put it comfort zone or reaching a feel of stagnation that is something like a signal so for naturally for sure sense of progress is a motivation so that sense of progress will try to give you some level of achievement to proceed further you have reached until now or you have climbed the scaffolding until here it is little more to up to climb that is there for sure but along with that if you feel a stagnation a stuck feeling just take back take some breaks take some hobbies or another discoveries and all as we mentioned in our other books and all some people some creative people take breaks even the people who was mentioned by anders erikson for 5000 or 10000 hours by gladwell and all they used to take such breaks and all even thomas alva edison he was famous for taking his power naps and all so the point is that if you feel that things or if you feel stagnated on your daily practice do something a day which it is not at all part of this so try to explore yourself that way you can get unstuck okay when you climb the chapter 6 defying gravity when you climb the scaffolding of growth you will feel the power of gravity naturally but the point is that you can defy that every time we come across a challenge normally if you look back in your life now we could have think that okay if i know this idea now i could have do that better that's one part of the equation but the point is that you cannot make everyone an expert to solve a problem try to consider an obstacle as a challenge rather than a threat even though you can take it in both way so use your existing learning to resolve that challenge so one two 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 options to do that first one they call it tutor effect if you have a challenge in doing something or tra- challenging and understanding something whatever is the field of endeavor even if it is a sports or in life or career work everything try to teach that to someone else like for example here now i am just explaining this book summary to you but in actually to do that i have to first read and understand that so naturally i am learning it so that's a tutor effect second thing if you want to grow or if you tell that used people used to tell that you are an average of the five people around you so you can be part of a team that team can defy the gravity so that will make your that's what come across the first one you call if you want to unleash that potential there if there is a right conditions and motivation more than a will power these are the important things will power cannot take you more but if you are in a particular conditions of environment and there is a proper motivation intrinsic or extrinsic motivation available there then that is a perfect moment to unleash your potential seven every child get ahead a traditional education system it always or even if you remember your schools classrooms whoever is the toppers in the class they will get a different level of affection and support from the teachers but there is another way of looking at school 
which famously known as Finnish style or Finland style of schooling. Because in normal education system, winner takes it all. But in Finnish school system, you are attending every children and they have their own opportunity to do explore themselves. So every child is a gem or every child is a carbon which you can polish and make it to a diamond. Because if you remember old days, teachers are considered for granted. If you are doctorate or someone, then that is, if you have a qualification to do that, that means you are a teacher. But actually, it is beyond the most famous physicist or the scientist Albert Einstein was a very bad physics teacher. Because when you become expert on something, it makes you difficult to explain something. So the point is that if you are an expert teacher, most probably you are not a good teacher like Albert Einstein, many other things. Because they will not get to understand the other perspective to explain that. So that's where the importance of professionalizing the education. Same way you are improving a child, you should have an improving or a growth or a feedback mechanism for a teachers as well. That's one part of the equation. Second thing, there is something called looping effect. Studies have shown that if students are given the same teachers in different classes, that actually improve them. Why? book is not explaining but maybe I'm just improvising from myself maybe because that way the both parties in that equation who is donoring and who is receiving both of them is understanding their weakness and challenge and they are getting exploring themselves together or they are just co-creating themselves chapter 8 mining for gold there is a famous chapter 8 mining for gold there is a famous incident about Chilean mining gold incident where the, some mining teams are being stuck inside a tunnel or something. And naturally, they have organized an expert of people to understand and make a solution, right? This is what normally do. So the point is that when they try to explore that, one 24-year-old who was not, not a part of this expert thing, his idea actually contributed to get that solution. So it is not necessary that experts or expertise is actually a thing. You should always look for mine for gold is somewhere else. So also there is something called babble effect. Whoever is talking too much, even it is in high school or even in your working scenario, they are most naturally considered the best option to become a leader. But actually, you will have a lot of good leaders of the silent people. Silent people or introverts can become a good leaders as well. So more than a ladder corporate structure, the book proposes to have a lattice structure where we have a horizontal level of inclusivity that actually try to just unleash the potential of all the people. Chapter 9 about the candidates and chapter 9 diamonds in the rough. It's most about job candidates, how people are interviewing and also the potential instead of relying on credentials or degrees to understand, try to just make a different way of interviewing, try to understand how this person is approaching the challenges, how he's reacting to challenges and unfamiliar situation. That will be more important than attitude or aptitude. Attitude towards that is more important than aptitude. So that's more about that remaining it's more talking about inclusivity and other things so that i i feel it's more repetitive to the context so that concludes our books today just think about the same think about our summaries what you learn and all try to just share your points or your learnings in the comments and feel free to subscribe that will motivate us to do more book summaries like this until then bye for now